Hey everyone, so today we've got a new video. We're going to be looking at Arsenal versus Leicester, which was yesterday's game. And it was kind of a boring game to watch, I found. Um, it wasn't there wasn't too many goal scoring opportunities, it was it was quite a, a disjointed game. It wasn't exactly the most entertaining game to watch. And I think this was due to what Leicester were doing, uh, especially in the first half. Leicester were really trying to press the opponents like they usually do. Just trying to force them into areas that they, they don't feel comfortable, such as like in this area here. Um, if they had a throw in, then Leicester would force men over, and possibly eight or nine men all in this one area, to try and stop Arsenal getting time on the ball, and then playing out to their really fast front three with the Bamian, Lacazette, and Saka. So it just they really want to make sure that they didn't get the time, time chance to turn and face the slow centre backs from Leicester. Um, and that's kind of how the first goal came about. It was all on kind of uh, Sabalas and Zaka to try and hold that ball up for, for uh, the Arsenal front three to push up and try and create that option. And they did it very well in the first half, I think. Uh, Xhaka and Sabalas, they managed to hold the ball up as much as possible considering that Leicester were really trying to push them and press them and not give them any time on the ball. And then, when uh, Sebastian and Zaka managed to get that ball out into a bammy angle to Saka or, or to Lacazette, then they were able to turn and use their pace, and that's how the first goal came about, with Saka getting in round back and playing that uh, cross ball to the, for the finish. So I think that was kind of where Leicester made the mistake. They didn't seem to want to keep possession, especially because I think it was made hard by the fact that they were pressing so high and trying to force Arsenal back. Because when they force them into areas, like I say, over here, when there's like eight or nine uh, of their lesser players pressing them into this one area, it meant if they did win that ball, then they didn't have any options out wide. And it was kind of just uh, like hopeful play. So if they won the ball back here, then they just try and play into body and or maybe try a little chip ball, and it was, just, it was kind of hopeful. And sometimes that works for Leicester, especially with the resilience and the perseverance of Vardy. He tends to just run after balls and causes defenders to make mistakes, especially considering Arsenal have probably one of the dopiest centre backs at the moment with Dan Louise. Then mistakes could come, but they did it in this game uh, early on for Leicester. And so I think when it came to the second half, Leicester made a bit of a change. And they weren't, they weren't too focused on pressing really high. And they just wanted to make sure that they had that outlet, let's say just an out wide, or they didn't push the centre backs further up so then they had that option to play out to the centre backs and play across and keep possession a lot more. And then obviously Arsenal did get a man sent off, but before that, Leicester were playing really, really well uh, and they, create, they were creating more chances for themselves. And then obviously when the uh, when the Arsenal got that red card, that was when Leicester were able to secure that goal. So I think Realistically, what Leicester should have maybe done is done what they did throughout the whole of the first half. Because Arsenal have not been playing very well um, throughout a lot of uh, throughout a lot of the year. Uh, their their attacking their attacking threat is really strong. So if Leicester are just able to maintain possession, then Arsenal should really be able to get on that ball because their front, uh, back three aren't really willing to. Um, step out and force some stakes for Leicester, whereas Leicester were willing to do that with Evans and um, the other two centre backs, Bennett, and I can't pronounce the other one, so I'm not going to bother. Um, so I just think Leicester should have maybe done what they did in the second half and just try to keep possession, just play, play their own football rather than trying to force Arsenal to make mistakes. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we'll, we'll go into it a little, uh, a little further and in a little more detail. But I just think that's maybe you could have um, done what they did in the second half throughout the first half and they would have secured um, three points for themselves. So this here is an example of what Leicester were trying to do in the first half. So what I've got here is a bit, a few, uh, an example that came up a few times. Um, when Leicester had a throw, uh, Arsenal had a throw down in, their, down in their half, so this would be better in taking the throw. Leicester really committed men forward to try and force Arsenal back into this area and try and use that uh, somewhat of an overload with the fact that Bellerin's taken um, to try and force Arsenal to make a mistake and then give Leicester a chance to score. So what you can see here is, uh, the first thing I want to point out is the Leicester back three. Uh, so what they're, what they're doing is they're going man for man. So you have Evans on Lacazette and then it's Bennett on Aubameyang and then again the Leicester back like still don't know how to pronounce, probably should have figured that out before this video, but 
and he was on Saka. And what I noticed they were willing to do was to step out of their position to ensure that they were staying touch tight on their man so that they couldn't then receive that ball and turn out. So for example, if we had um, Lacazette try to make a move in this area here, there were two options. Either Evans would follow this man in this space here and stay touch tight, or um, oftentimes because Ndidi was kind of a free man due to the somewhat of an overload, uh, oftentimes he would then follow Lacazette and stay touch tight. But if um, this happened a few times, if the Banyang then decided to make this move into here to try and give an option, then um, so that the lesson weren't completely open in this space here, then uh, indeed he would then take a Banyang, and then this would be when Evans would have to then follow Lacazette if Lacazette then made that move. So Arsenal really like kind of pended at this point because even if a Banyang and um, Lacazette were trying to give that option there, and it just made it getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, so that uh, Arsenal weren't really able to get many, many touches on the ball, and it had to be one touch passing if they managed to play out, which eventually they did, and then ended up scoring. But what you can also see here is um, Vardy did, does a very good job, he always has, he's done a very good job of staying touch tight on Mustafi here, so they don't have that outlet to then play that long ball. But he says he stays very touch tight. And then if that ball isn't going to go to Mustafi, he doesn't just stay there. He he can anticipate where the ball's going to go next. So if Mustafi doesn't receive that ball, and let's say it goes out, he manages to get out to Zappa here, then he will he will press Xhaka. Um yeah, he'll press Xhaka, forcing like a 2v1 for Xhaka, whilst uh, trying to cover that pass back to Mustafi. So Vardy does a very good job of that, and it makes it very hard for defences to deal with because he's moving all the time and he's trying to cover that pass and then it means then they have to react to what he's doing and it just means that they're one step behind all the time. But I will say that in the first half, despite all this pressure, Xhaka and Ceballos here, they did very well at trying to actually receive that ball with their backs, uh, with their backs to the Leicester goal and then try and play it out, or maybe try and take on their man and get uh, Arsenal facing forwards, facing towards the Leicester goal, exactly what they wanted. Leicester could not deal with the pace of these front three here. The second they get chances to turn the defence, that's when Leicester are in trouble. Because, because they're committing so far forwards and there's all this space, that's where uh, Arsenal can abuse that pace that they have with their front three and just play a little ball in around the back here, and then they have all this space where they can use their pace and make sure that they win that ball and try and score the goal. Like they did with Saka, they got into that space here and then played that ball across and it was an easy finish for them. So this is what Leicester were trying to do and it also meant that, again, if you can see, if they, if they win this ball in here, because they've congested it so much and made it so tight for Arsenal, it also means that when they get the ball, it's tight for themselves. And I don't think they are as comfortable in tighter areas like that as like Arsenal are, so it kind of it kind of played into Arsenal's favour. Leicester were kind of playing with the hopes of a bit of luck and a bit of, uh, and make some mistakes from the Arsenal defence in that like if they won the ball here and he just like clicked it over, maybe Devin Lewis might make a mistake or um, it might just it might just fall luckily for one of the centre mids and then have a shot. And it just meant that Leicester weren't playing on their skills, they were playing more on the hopes that Arsenal made mistakes or maybe for a bit of luck and it just meant that Leicester weren't able to utilise their own players and their, the, the reason that they're so high in the league they weren't able to utilise those facts to try and win this game. So here we have what Leicester were trying to do in the second half and what was working for them quite well. So what, we, what they were trying to do in the second half was actually try and maintain such a lot more. They weren't just trying to force Arsenal uh, back into their half and make Arsenal make mistakes. Rather, this time, they were trying to actually play the football that they wanted to play, and it was more on them rather than what Arsenal were doing, it was more on what Leicester were doing. So, for example, here, if we had the ball back in this side again, um, what Arsenal don't do that Leicester did really well, to an extent, is that Arsenal don't commit men, uh, men forwards to try and win that ball and try and gain possession. They, they seem to let Leicester 
uh, come onto them and hope that less than many mistakes in the, in the attacking third and then try and get the ball and get the counter attack with the pace in front three, which isn't a bad idea. However, Leicester were quite comfortable in possession and they managed to maintain possession for quite long spells. And then because Leicester, they seem to play really well for each other and they seem to work really, really hard to try and win the ball back, it meant that even if Leicester did lose the ball in this final third, it would take a lot for Arsenal to then try and play out, maintain positions for themselves and try and get on that counter attack. So the reason I think Arsenal made a few mistakes here and what sort of cost them in terms of trying to gain possession back it's due to this back three here, it meant that there was always that extra centre back who was sort of like a, a lone wolf and he was sort of um, trying to just stop, stop uh, passing lanes into Vardy. And this meant that Vardy kind of had a lot of freedom, so he was just playing, he was making it really hard and he was just playing in between these two, these two centre backs, making it really hard for them, trying to keep them moving and trying to keep them sort of disjointed and which eventually sort of created more gaps in the middle and sort of a larger space between them which is where Perez came in. Perez and Ilianetro both worked really well off Vardy I thought because there was this space sort of in between so Perez himself would play in between uh, the centre mids here and the centre backs here which gave him a nice comfortable amount of space from where he, if he received that ball, he then turn and either have a shot or play a ball into Vardy, a little ball that he tried a few times into Vardy, who made those runs into this area here. Which he tried a few times and it nearly worked. And eventually, uh, a play like this happened, and Leicester, that's how Leicester got their goal. But it just meant that because Leicester were playing this way, it was really hard for the Arsenal back three to so try and commit anything. Whereas what Leicester did, uh, like I said earlier, is they, they stuck to their front three. They weren't afraid to step out of their centre back position to follow their man and force them to make the mistakes. Whereas also they, they would happen to sit, which meant Leicester were able to keep the ball more comfortably. So even if, uh, let's, let's uh, ignore that for a second, if Leicester were in this area here and were getting pinned in, because Arsenal were just sort of happy to let them sit off. It meant that they could play simple balls into here, in here, and then all the way wide if necessary, all, all the way back to the keeper, and then sort of go out the other side. It just meant it made it really hard for Arsenal, and then they probably got more demoralised as, as the second half went on because Leicester just maintained possession, and that's what Arsenal wanted to do. They wanted to maintain possession, get the ball up to the front three, and move forwards. But it seemed like Arsenal just trying to keep that one, one goal lead and then they were just fighting pressure, fighting pressure, fighting pressure. And then obviously, unfortunately, a little red card, but I think Leicester was still going to score even without it. And it was just, yeah, it was really unfortunate for Arsenal that they, they decided to just sit back and play like this. I don't know if this was something that Arteta had said, um, like try and maintain this uh, one goal lead and just allow the pressure on and try and get them on the counter, which isn't a bad idea because you have a pace with the front three. But I don't think he took into consideration the commitment and the pace of the centre mids. Jack and Ceballos aren't exactly the fastest and um, but like the most solid defensively, and they, they don't work too hard. Whereas with Leicester, the the work rate of Ndidi and Perez and Vardy and Ineco and all of them, it just makes it really hard when Arsenal get the ball to then try and play out. Whereas the opposite happens with uh, Leicester. When Leicester lose that ball, or when they have possession, Arsenal don't commit as hard to try and win that ball back, and it just meant that Leicester were able to maintain possession again, play back out to Schmeichel if necessary, and then play again. And it just it made it really, really hard. The reason uh, as well, I just want to say why I've used this sort of wing uh, in both my examples is a lot of players coming down this wing. I noticed in, in the well, throughout pretty much most of the game, because I think. Tierney over here did very, very well both attacking and defensively in stopping Justin and in trying to give that option wide. And I don't know if Leicester noticed this or if it was just by coincidence, but a lot of Leicester's play ended up coming down this wing. I think due to the pressure that Tierney was uh, causing, I think Tierney was one of uh, Arsenal's better players, uh, especially in the second half. He actually showed a lot of commitment and a lot of um, desire to win that from the back of Leicester. And I think if every other Arsenal player was showing that sort of desire, then it would have made it a lot harder for Leicester. And I think Arsenal would have won comfortably. But I just don't think Arsenal seem to want... 
Arsenal don't want to play in a different way than they usually have to. Arsenal wanted to keep that ball comfortable and try and play their ticket tack of football and try and keep possession and get it up to their front three. But if they can't play like that, then it doesn't seem like Arsenal are willing to try and do anything else to try and stop that. They just want to wait for possession to come to them, whereas they're not willing to go out and try and win possession back for themselves. Whereas Tierney, I think he, he was really willing to try and force a lesson to make him safe and win possession back. And I think that's just where Arsenal sometimes lack is their desire and their, their, just, their natural want for that win. They don't seem to play really as a team as well as, um, as like Leicester did. And I think that's where Arsenal have been lacking for a lot of the season. But players just don't seem to want to work as hard and they think things will come a lot easier. Especially with um, the likes of David Luiz. I just, I just think they're really lacking in some desire there. And I think this is where Leicester, uh, this is why Leicester are so high up the league. They don't exactly have individually phenomenal players. But because they work so well as a team and they work hard for each other and they, they have that desire. And I think a lot of it comes from Vardy and people playing with Vardy because they see him work. And that's why I think um, let's do so well. And it was the same with um, City versus Savannah. Savannah, the reason Savannah managed to maintain the lead that they did and get that lead was because of Danny Ings and his desire. And it just it just showed throughout the rest of the team. When one player works really really hard for the team and people know City is a is a well known player such as a captain or a player like Vardy who has that sort of authority over everyone else. It means, it means everyone else is going to play as hard as he is just so that they can try and win that ball and get that win. Whereas uh, Arsenal, they don't seem to have that at the moment. But they do have individually great players, which is why they're staying so high and why they're getting these wins. But I just think they need to work better as a team and try and gain that desire. And I don't know if that's coming from Arteta um, or if that's coming from the individual players in the team, such as Devin Luiz. Um, we, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell at the moment, but I think Leicester did very well and probably deserved the win in the end. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, feel free to leave a like, comment, share, anything. Um, I'm just starting this up and I, I hope you guys enjoy the video. So if you have any comments, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm just trying to improve myself as a person and as an analyst. And I'm just, I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Thank you.